Most drivers have been in the situation where they've been desperately tired whilst they are driving, usually late at night or early in the morning or on a long journey. But when does driving whilst tired become a serious offence? Well, actually, driving whilst you're tired can already be a serious offence because driving without adequate sleep not only has this been updated in the highway code just recently which I'm going to come back to but this is already considered to be one of the factors when determining whether it is dangerous driving under the sentencing guidelines and is referred to by the CPS the Crown Prosecution Service so that's what I'm talking about today but first of all if you're new to me I'm a barrister who helps you to understand law so please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and check out Black Belt Secrets which I also do daily content on answering your questions which is linked in the description below. So quite rightly and quite obviously any factor that is the cause of a fatal collision whilst driving is going to be heavily frowned upon and quite likely amount to dangerous driving or careless driving. And both cases regardless of whether it is careless or dangerous that results in a fatality carries a 14 year prison sentence. This is in addition to the unlimited fine and numerous points and disqualification from driving driving as you might expect. So first of all let's jump to the highway code and look at the updates that have been posted just recently. One of the updates among many is rule 91 which provides driving when you are tired greatly increases your risk of collision. To minimize the risk make sure you are fit to drive, do not begin a journey if you are tired, get sufficient sleep before embarking on a long journey, avoid undertaking long journeys between midnight and 6 a.m where natural alertness is at a minimum, plan your journey to take sufficient breaks, a minimum break of at least 15 minutes after every two hours is recommended. If you feel sleepy stop in a safe place but do not stop in an emergency area or on a hard shoulder of a motorway. So what I often get in the comments is people saying that the highway code is just guidance and doesn't relate to law. Now obviously this is wrong on a number of levels. First of all many of the rules in the highway code have direct supporting legislation which create separate discrete offences for breach of said rules. However in a more general sense these are the rules of the road. They are designed to make the road safe and breaching these rules is going to be a significant contributory factor as to the determination of whether you are guilty of careless or indeed dangerous driving among other things. So to that end I'm going to refer you to some of the examples which are set out both on the CPS website, the Crown Prosecution Service and the Sentencing Council's definitive guidelines. These provide examples of circumstances that are likely to be considered as dangerous driving. In other words if any of the following factors apply to you in this situation you may well be considered guilty of dangerous driving and if there is a fatality death by dangerous driving. And these among many which I will go through include driving when you are knowingly deprived of adequate sleep or rest. So if you are caught falling asleep at the wheel you would almost certainly be guilty of dangerous driving and in the event that it's determined that you were sleepy at the time and there's a collision or worse still a fatal collision then you may well be guilty of death by dangerous driving and be looking at a significant prison sentence. Other factors contained within the guidelines which would amount to dangerous driving include racing or competitive driving, failing to have proper and safe regard for vulnerable road users such as cyclists, motorcyclists, horse riders and so on, driving at a speed which is particularly inappropriate for the road or traffic conditions, aggressive driving such as sudden lane changes, cutting into a line of vehicles or driving much too close to the vehicle in front. You will recall from one of my recent videos I caught several vehicles driving at 70 miles an hour in the outside lane on a dual carriageway not more than one or two meters from each other. In my view based on the sentencing council guidelines these are factors which almost certainly amount to dangerous driving. Other things which I'm sure you all see people doing include using a handheld mobile phone device. These can lead to the driver being dangerously distracted and therefore amount to dangerous driving. And the same goes for reading something else such as a newspaper or watching a film on an iPad or even being deep in conversation with your passenger and not paying full attention to the road. And remember in these situations it is not necessary for the prosecutor to consider whether or not the driver had thought about the possible consequences of what he or she was doing. Only whether or not 
they were dangerously distracted by any of these sorts of things or engaging in the sorts of driving activities which I've mentioned here or in the extensive list of things that can amount to dangerous driving. So remember, you need to take the highway code as a body of rules, whether or not each individual rule is backed up by legislation that creates an offence. Taken together, they are a body of rules that can and will be used to determine whether or not a competent and reasonable driver would consider that your driving fell below the standards expected. So as a bit of a stark warning, I suppose, for those that do not consider the highway code to be law or do not feel that they have to comply with elements of the highway code, I suggest to you that they are a body of rules, some of which are directly supported by legislation, but in any event taken together will be used to determine whether or not your driving amounts to careless driving or dangerous driving and many other offences that can be considered. So please do heed the warning of not driving whilst you are without sufficient rest or sleep because if you are found to be falling asleep at the wheel, there could be very serious consequences. So with that in mind, I hope you found the video useful. Please give it a thumbs up and remember, stay humble and subscribe.